We just arrived at Buddy Pool and the lights are off, so that means um, we got the run the mill of everything. First things first, I wanted to go ahead and let y'all know about a special limited time offer. This is limited time only. A link in the description below, or it's pinned in the chat, or it's pinned in the first comment of this video. This month, it's only a limited time availability. Like the whiskey tumblers, I am selling Tank Radio coffee mugs. These coffee mugs are great for camping. These coffee mugs are just gonna be amazing. They have my logo on it. I love the green. I love everything about it. You got to order now. This is a pre-order only. So I'm gonna order these and then um, it's gonna take a month or two and then I'll be able to ship them out. So there's gonna be a little delay when you order them, but uh, is only pre-orders only. If you want your Tank Radio coffee mug, go ahead and head over to Grapevine Amateur Radio and look under drinkware and you'll see my mug and order it now. I love them, I love them. We got Kyle and Pixie and the whole shop floor. <laughs> I want that. We're gonna be taking some of all this stuff. We don't need no stinking boxes. I like Jason's idea I just heard over there. We're gonna build ourselves some hex beams and you know, courteously ship them to ourselves. The large conference room. I think this is where we're gonna be staying tonight. Ooh, look, it's a big teddy bear. <laughs> Here we are at Buddy Pole. We're gonna be walking inside and be taking a look at the factory and all the fun stuff going on at uh, Buddy Pole. Yeah. They just moved in a month ago and they're not all really settled in. Ignoring Jason and I's stuff right there. <laughs> and we're going to the factory. Here's all the fun magic stuff. And it's Chris. <laughs> hey everybody. Chris, man, uh, from Buddy Pool, I like to start out, what's your call sign? Uh, Whiskey 6 High Frequency Portable. <laughs> I W6 love it. HFP. Awesome, awesome. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about Buddy Pool? How did you get started? And um... Yeah, we started in 2001. Um, my father, W3FF, uh, it started tinkering with a dipole, off-center fed dipole design made out of PVC. And at the time, I was in between jobs. So I said, hey, let's uh, I'll help you out a little bit. Let's see if we can um, get some of these to market. A lot of people were asking for them. A lot of people were building them themselves mm -hmm. as a homebrew antenna can still do that. Designs are still on the internet. And once we started building those, it just took off. This iteration has been around about five or six years now and um, don't really see any improvements on the horizon mm -hmm. from the basic antenna. And how did you come about with the idea of the Buddy Hex? Most experience with, okay. uh, with a field day and operating, and how, how did you come right. across that idea? We had been prototyping a uh, Yagi design, two element Yagi design, and uh, had tried a number of different hex beams. And uh, the issue with the hex beams is that they were always too heavy and required a tower, and that's, that's not the type of thing that we do but um, came across some materials that uh, a fiberglass company that makes very strong uh, non-carbon fiber, but fiberglass uh, wound uh, tubes and uh, decided that we could make a hex beam that was quite a bit lighter. It could be used for, for portable work. Mm -hmm. uh, our hex beam is six through 20 meters. It's nine and a half pounds, fully loaded with all those wires on there. So uh, pretty much anybody can can push that up on a, uh, on a push-up pole. Um, we have our mast work system here. Um, the hand crank I took off, but you just crank that with your, you can crank it with your pinky finger and, and rotate uh, mm -hmm. the hex beam or the dipole. Um, but the hex beam is designed just to sit on top and you cam over with one of these cam locks. It's locked in position. Fast to set up, great for field day, great for small backyards. Uh, I have. A lot of customers that are using them and like in HOAs um, as, as semi-permanent or permanent antennas so mm -hmm. um, you already brought it up the mass work I love I love it um, the hand crank is super easy any um, person can uh, do that and, and a child can do it yeah. and it's it's just, just your super, pinky finger yeah, <laughs> it's, it's awesome yeah there's it uh, what, what, how'd you come up with the idea inside. of um, having it being rotating the entire mass instead of just that top like a rotor? Right. Mass? I mean, others have done that, and um, that's uh, my 
mechanical engineer that I work with, he says, hey, we can, we can um, injection mold our own gear system. We use some different materials for those, uh, for those gears internally. But that's all sealed internally. And, um, and then we, we wanted to design collar locks that didn't have to use a great deal of force uh, to prevent the mast from spinning. Because spinning out in the wind with a Yagi, a directional antenna, or the, the hex beam, uh, a lot of times it wants to, to spin ah, those yeah, around yeah. masts. So uh -huh. this is not a round mast, it's a keyed mast. We don't rely on the collar locks to prevent that rotation. That's a big problem. So uh, we can actually put 60 pounds on top of this head weight, and these collar locks will not slip. That's... So yeah, it's a, it's a great design for uh, portable use and very quick to set up and um, some other features to it that are that are unique as well I won't go into at the moment but uh, we have a wireless rotator that is uh, near completion now so we're getting ready to do the tooling the injection molding for that and that's something that you can control from your your iPhone or any phone a tablet, um, computer, laptop, just punch in an azimuth and uh, there's an electronic compass that mounts on the back of this collar lock. There's a rail back uh -huh. here. And so it, it knows which way is north. You set that thing down, uh, we will interface with some of the rotator programs. And so you'll be able to put in a call sign or click on a map and that antenna will turn automatically and um, shoot in that direction. Awesome. One final product that I absolutely love, and I point this out every time I do a pull to pack breakdown, your Power Buddy Pole Mini 2. Right. I absolutely love that power um, solar charge system. Yep. You have a larger version also. What did you go from, I want to do a antenna system to this power pole charge Yeah, controller? it just came out of the frustration of going out to the field and having all these different devices. I had. Uh, we used to sell a very small little solar charge controller, and then I had a, uh, a watt meter, you know, a little inline meter to how much uh, voltage or current uh, was passing through, how much what, what was left in the battery. And so it was a number of these different things, and you're ganging them up to try to get all this information. And we thought, well, we could do this in one device, and then, but we can go several steps further. And so we can make this a, a solar charge controller that's not only RF quiet, but it's also um, adjustable for different battery chemistry. So you're down in the Caribbean, the only thing you can get your hand on is a motorcycle battery, which mm -hmm. are um, real common down there and, and cheap, but um, they, you know, the top voltage is quite a bit less than your Lip LiPo 4s, um, lithium iron phosphates. So the ability to be able to go into the menu system and change the uh, maximum charge voltage um, is fairly unique. I don't know many other controllers um, that, that do that, um, certainly none that are RF quiet. And it's, we were talking, I was talking with Jason from Hem Radio 2.0 the other day, and he was saying, yeah, you know, I feel kind of naked out there without that thing now. I'm so used to looking at it, and that's exactly yeah. the way I feel. Once you start using it with or without the panel. You don't mm -hmm. need the panel. You know, you can run from battery and just run uh, through to whatever you're powering, your transceiver, laptop. I absolutely love having it to just run in the battery just so I can see how much voltage and everything's coming right. through. And uh, when I'm able to throw it on the um, solar. Also for my battery CPAP machine, I run it as the charge controller through the battery and everything. And right. at night, I still run it through the uh, Mini 2 because I actually it's the Mini 1. I have two of okay. them. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I had the Mini the 1 version. and then the Mini 2. Um, and I use it uh, every time for that CPAP machine. Then when um, the sun's out, I unplug the CPAP machine because it's a leech of power. And then I yeah. just throw the solar charger out there and I wait for the float to come up. And I was like, yeah. yes, I, I just absolutely love it. Yeah, there's a nice little fuel gauge there. I keep my eye on when I'm uh, in a pile up and, uh, and, you know, I don't want to, I don't, you don't need to look so close to see what the actual voltage is mm -hmm. of the battery. There's a fat line that comes up from the bottom and that's, that's the fuel gauge and you can watch that thing. And if it's dipping pretty quick, I'm glancing at it while I'm operating. If it's dipping pr pretty fast, you know, I e either need to change the orientation of that panel to the sun, get a little more current coming in there or um, uh, back off on your 
on your power output, um, any number of different things, but it's a good gauge. It just lets you know. And sometimes you're watching that gauge mm -hmm. and you're actually watching it go up. You might be listening more or less key down and, um, but, and there's quite a bit of sun, your panel, you know, a large panel. So, um, yeah, there's an, I could go on and on and on about that device. There's a lot more things you can do with low voltage alarms and cutoffs mm -hmm. and things like that. But, uh, yeah, all that information's on the website. So. Awesome, man. Uh, do you want to show us a little bit of the, the, uh, yeah, just real quick. Um, this is kind of a, this is a fledging, um, uh, uh, showroom right uh -huh. now. It, it hosts my mountain bike and my fly <laughs> rods and my recurve bow and yeah, some I saw that. walking sticks and, and whatnot. So, so antennas and radios will be perfect for all this. The, the, all the yeah. outdoors and just, just then you have a radio sitting there and your antenna sitting there. We just have not honestly had time to, um, to get all this together just yet. So, um, but it's coming and we do invite people to come up and pick up product or spare parts or whatnot. So they're welcome now. It's just, we don't have the showroom just yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is the shop floor out here and in the middle of doing some shipping right now, some of that's going, uh, international. Um, this is mostly just kind of, this is all going to change starting, um, this week and a uh, new shipping manager Woo. coming to work for us here. Yeah. Yes. Long overdue. Um, so, and this is kind of where we do a lot of the assembly is back here. And uh, so di just different tables for different things that we're working on. It's been a bit like triage. I tell people because <laughs> it's, it's just whatever we can do to get product um, out the door. Uh, we're, we need more people mm -hmm. here, need to hire more people. We've been trying to do that. It's the hardest part of running this business right now. So um, a lot of times it's not always as, as clean and organized as we'd like, and, uh, but um, getting product out to the customers is, is the first mm -hmm. priority. So, so everything's assembled here in the States, right? Yeah, all oh. the parts. There's very few parts that are that come uh, from international sources. Um, electronic components for like the Power Mini and Power Pro, Power Plus, I mean, uh, those, those of course are um, sourced from all around the world, mm -hmm. but um, pretty much everything else is made in the US and we are back there. Um, as soon as we're done with this video, mm -hmm. uh, my worker here is gonna start cutting tubing for another run of the Massworks tripods and masks. So. Oh man, those, those Masswork masks are amazing and awesome. I see them bend almost at a 90 degrees with the hex on yeah, top if you don't, and it just pops right back up. If you're not up. careful with those guy lines, yeah, yeah, setting those guy lines is key. Um, laser yeah. system in here for laser cutting and laser etching. Uh -huh. uh, that's back in the corner there. This is um, it's my station here. And Ooh, I was playing with this this afternoon. It's ICOM 7700 with an ACOM, uh, it's a 600 watt amp. And then uh, up on the roof, we access through here, I have the hex beam. So I'm up about 45 feet. And um, currently, I've got a little uh, rotator nice. that's not hooked up right now, but it just, just a left right thing until we get that, that wireless one going. Do some 3D printing over here. Uh -huh. and uh, large format printing. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, we have a conference room back through the, the heavy door there. Check a look at the conference room because this is where we've been staying. We got the Pixie Pen. This beautiful table, man, I love it. That is a beautiful That one wood. probably weighs yes. 1,500 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is yeah. probably never leaving uh -huh. this room. And then there's where state, Jason stayed. There is my um, cot back there. To wrap things up here at Buddy Pole, we went out with Chris and we set up a Buddy Pole Stick at Pro antenna over there. And we're just making some POTA contacts. And uh, we had a blast and we had some fun. Uh, we did a factory tour and that was awesome. And um, as always y'all, go forth and conquer. Don't forget to pre-order those mugs. <laughs> We're gonna build ourselves some X beam. We're gonna teddy bear. <laughs>